Good afternoon and welcome from Temecula Cosmetic Dentistry and we'd like to present a short history of implants. Starting with the question, would you consider implants as one of the more modern implementations of cosmetic dentistry? Well, in the 1930s, Dr. Wilson Pobno had uh, been doing some searching in the Honduras and he found pieces of shell that uh, showed evidence that they were used as old dental implants. And as they did the research, they found that they had been done by the Mayan civilization about 600 AD. Now they found similar types of implants made from shell in the ancient Egyptian artifacts as well. Now before implants, there was only the option of dentures. These are one of the more famous set and these belong uh, <laughs> these were in the 1700s and I don't know that I'd want to put those in my mouth but I guess at that time that was the only option you had but these were the ones that belonged to our first president George Washington so now you know why he did not smile with a lot of teeth showing uh, in his many portraits now Washington was not the only patriot associated with dentures. He uh, had warned the British coming but uh, Paul Revere also spent a great deal of time using these tools as he practiced dentistry and had been somebody that made dentures in that time. Now dentures improved over the years with the introduction of uh, new techniques and materials to make them stronger, longer lasting and more comfortable. However, dentures still were attached to other teeth or gums. So with dentures, you have something foreign in your mouth. In 1951, the American Academy of Implant Dentistry was founded in the city of Chicago. They were the first organization of their kind in the world. And they were dedicated to the advancement of the art and science of implant dentistry. The following year, a Swedish researcher changed the direction of implants. His name was Professor Per Igvar Bindmark. Uh, con he conducted an experiment where he utilized a titanium implant. He was testing on rabbits and he was putting these implants into their bones to see how that would affect the blood circulation throughout the bones. And what he had discovered was that the bone had integrated completely with the implant. And he called the discovery Osseo integration. Then in 1965, Brenmark created history when he treated Gosta Larsen with the first titanium dental implants. Here we have an illustration of a modern implant with a titanium implant into the bone where you can see the screw part. In, in about six months that will fuse completely with the bone and become part of the body. Uh, going through the soft tissue or the gum is the abutment and then topped off with a crown that is giving the working part of the tooth. Over the last 40 to 50 years there's been a great history established with implants. In fact there's been some implants that have been in use for more than 40 years and they have had a success rate of about 96 percent. So implants have become the choice for replacing a single tooth or the whole bunch. Hope this has been informative and you've enjoyed our short presentation. Thank you for stopping by.